All right, welcome back to another video. This one, we're gonna take a look at some security and compliance stuff in Office 365. Back on January 1 of 2020, I actually wrote a blog post about the top five or six things you should do in Office 365 when it comes to security and compliance. So I figured let's record a few videos. We'll tackle each one in a new video, look at how you enable it, how you use it, some of the benefits of these various services, settings in Office 365. The first one we're gonna look at today is the Unified Audit Log. In my mind, this is one of the top ones that everybody should turn on because it's not enabled by default in Office 365 or Microsoft 365. This is one of those services that's available that's not turned on, enabled by default. It audits all kinds of activity within your Office 365 tenant, so you can go back and look at it from a risk, compliance, security perspective, but also from an administrative perspective in terms of what people are doing or if you're looking for what happened to a certain file or a certain email, it tracks all of that information. So let's dive in, look at how you enable it, how you turn it on, and then I'll show you some tenants where I already have it turned on so you can see what it tracks and how to use it. Let's jump over here to our browser and let's go to office.com and I'm actually just gonna sign up for a brand new tenant so that you can see what it's like starting from day one. So we're gonna drive into our business and our enterprise plans and let's try an Office 365 E3 plan. I'm gonna go ahead and enter my email address. This is already associated with an Office 365 account, so it will tell you, hey, there's already a service here. I know that, but I want a trial. So we can click down here to create a new account instead and enter in our information here, and I'll put in my company name, company size for now, we can just do, we'll do two to four. That doesn't actually matter a whole lot. Next, verification code, I'm gonna get a text message. So send verification code, enter in our verification code, we'll verify that. Let's do this for unified audit log demo. See if anybody's used that one yet. Nope, so next. Create a username here, password. Don't forget these because this is going to be your new global admin if you're signing up for a new tenant. So if you forget these, you won't be able to log in. You'll have to go stand up a new one. Can't really delete it. You have to wait till your trial expires and then your grace period expires and then it'll be deleted and this will be available again. Once that's created, it's gonna go through and start setting up that Office 365 account. That's all set. Let's go to setup and start walking through the setup wizard to get everything configured. 365 email, let's, let's jump into email just so we can get through this and then we'll actually exit and continue later because this is all we need to do to get started with our environment. So this is that admin homepage. I might do another YouTube video here on just getting started with Office 365, but to find this unified audit log, we need to expand out show all. And this has our new security and compliance center. Based on the version of Office 365 you have, this may be combined into one where it's the security and compliance center, or they have them broken out into security and compliance. If you click on compliance, which is where this would normally be, this one is gonna give me the old one where it's protection.office.com. Uh, the new environment is, I believe it's compliance.office.com. I'll show you what it looks like if you do end up in one of those new ones where they're split out. Next, we need to expand out search here, and then we have our audit log search. If you click on this, it will tell you right away, um, this one popped up really fast, sometimes I've had this take a couple minutes, that in order to use this, we have to turn it on. So you click turn on auditing. Yes, we wanna continue. This may fail. Uh, when it's a brand new tenant, everything's still getting spun up. A lot of times this uh, fails the first time you set it up. You may have to wait a day or two to turn this on. Once you turn it on, it can take up to 24 hours to activate anywhere and start pulling in data too. Don't enable this right away. Expect it to start pulling in audit data and be able to view it on day one. And this is why really as soon as you have an Office 365 
environment. And as soon as it lets you enable this, uh, go enable it right away so it has time to enable, to start pulling in the data, collecting the data, all of that before your tenant really starts getting used. Once it starts collecting data, if you're on a Office 365, Microsoft 365, E3 plan, it will retain data in the unified audit log for 90 days. So you'll be able to go and see data from this point in time, 90 days back, assuming it's been enabled for that long. If you are on one of the E5 plans, you're able to retain it for 365 days. There are ways to export that and save it so that you can view it for longer. It can get kind of tricky. I've worked on a few solutions with PowerShell where export it, save it to Excel spreadsheets, shove it out into like an Azure SQL database so you can retain it for longer. Uh, if you do need that, again, there's some things you need to take into consideration when you're doing that. By default, you get 90 days or 365 days based on that E3 or E5 respectively. Um, this is still going in and enabling it. So while this enables, let's jump over to another tenant I have where I already have it enabled. I've been collecting some data. Here you can see kind of what that looks like. I have 600 results loaded here. As you scroll down, it will continue to load more. So if I would hit the bottom of this page, uh, you'll see now we have 660 results. I am looking at everything in this demo tenant I have from January 1 to the end of February. And you'll start seeing in here some of the things that's tracked where I was creating list columns in SharePoint. I was updating list columns, viewing SharePoint pages, accessing files, logging in. This one doesn't get a lot of email activity. So this is gonna tend to be a lot of SharePoint activity because that's what I use this demo tenant for a lot. But if you click on one of these two, um, let's just click on view page, you'll get a lot more details about it in terms of the client IP address I came from, what that site actually was, browser I used, user ID, uh, all of that type of information. If you wanna pull this out, and look at it a little bit more, you also have this export results where you can save the loaded results or you can export all the results. I'm gonna download all of them to show you what this looks like. This is where you'll get the most amount of data. If you just do the loaded results, you'll get something that looks very much like uh, this screen right here. If you do wanna narrow it down and filter it, you can open up these filters to filter by activity, items, dates. So this is where, like I said, I've used this for actually finding files. Someone moved a file within SharePoint and people couldn't find it anymore. You can use this unified audit log to find where a file in SharePoint was moved from, where it was moved to, who moved it on what day. So you can just go talk to them, hey, got to be careful about moving files, figure out where it is, put it back if you need to. So that's one of the nice things about this unified audit log beyond the security and compliance. And this is an overview of all those activities you can look at. So it tracks file activities, folder activities. These are some of those SharePoint list activities. You can drill down into some of the SharePoint admin, uh, exchange mailbox in terms of messages, messages getting updated, mailboxes created, Sway, eDiscovery, Power BI is in here. Uh, you can see a lot of information. This keeps track of almost everything somebody might be doing within your environment. However, due to that, you do have to be careful with who has access to this. Uh, like you saw, I'm able to see file paths, file names, where files get moved to and from. Same thing applies to emails, to uh, stuff in Teams, to Sway. So if your executive team is doing some of those confidential activities, maybe there's some files they're working with that should not be exposed to the company or people in the company shouldn't uh, be aware of, you don't want to just let anybody be able to search through this unified audit log. You want to be very selective in terms of who can get to it, who can access it. That's part of the reason that as they're kind of evolving the security and compliance center, they're starting to break this out. So the compliance center where this unified audit log would live in the security center, um, you can start setting permissions a little bit tighter around who would have access to something like the unified audit log. It's not completely there yet, they're still working through some of these permissions, but 
it is at least possible to prevent people from getting to the security and audit log. So not necessarily all of your administrators would have access to something like this to go dig through it and look through these activities. Uh, another nice thing you can do with this is set alert policies. So if you want to be alerted when certain activities occur, maybe a certain file is accessed or deleted or sites are created within your SharePoint environment, you can go set these activities if a file was checked out, um, if it was checked out by a certain user, and then who should be alerted about that activity. So just a couple things there. You can have search too, so you can do that initial search based on which user did something. You can search for part of a file name, a folder name, a path name. So really powerful here. Uh, this audit log is downloaded, so let's just pop that open a minute and take a look at that. When you are looking at this in Excel, it isn't the most friendly file to look at. It has four columns, the creation date, the user ID, the operation, what they did, and then the audit data. This is essentially a massive JSON string of all of that information that we saw when we looked at the details when we selected one of the unified audit log entries. So the information is all there. You can search for it, you can filter on it, but if you really want this in a readable format, you do have to do some parsing of that audit data column. This, meanwhile, did enable. So now you can see that the Office 365 audit log, it's being prepared. You'll start seeing that activity in a couple of hours. So if we go in and search in our brand new environment for it, this probably isn't gonna bring anything back at this point in time. Again, we haven't done a lot in this environment. It's still collecting the data. But once this is on, once it's started collecting the data, you'll start seeing it in there. So definitely, I just really encourage you, go turn this one on right away. If you have an environment that's a little bit newer, uh, I have one here, let's go look at this one. So this is actually my production environment, so I'm not gonna dig through the unified audit log a whole lot here, but I'm going to at least show you how to get it if you're in an environment where security and compliance have been broken out. So in here, we can click on show all, and down here, you'll see very similar to what we had before where I have security and compliance. However, if I click on compliance, you'll notice my URL is compliance.microsoft.com as opposed to before when we went to protection.office.com. And you'll also see then in here that there is no search. So we can click down here and look at more resources. And up here, we have our Office 365 Security and Compliance Center. This is that combined Security and Compliance Center so I can now click on open and get to that protection.office.com. The other thing you can do is just remember protection.office.com. That's where you can go find it. Now, if I go down to search and my audit log search, here's my unified audit log search, and I can start searching for activities within my production environment. So again, high level, that's all there is to it. I just wanted to walk you guys through it, let you know what's there, make sure you enable this in your tenant. I cannot tell you the number of times I've used this from a security perspective, from a compliance perspective, from an administration perspective. This is one of those services that everybody, every Office 365 tenant admin should know about, should be aware of, and have enabled. So if you like this video, subscribe down in the links below. Um, click on like if you liked the video. I also dropped a couple of other links down below. I have a getting started with Office 365 email course that you can sign up for. Get 13 daily emails on different aspects of getting going with Office 365. So go check out those. Hope you enjoyed this video and you learned a little bit about the unified audit log. Thanks a lot.